In an era of economic jargon, it can sometimes be difficult to catch up on how the economy is playing, which can in turn affect the way you make your own financial decisions. You must have heard about the term economic bubbles. Despite the fact that financial bubbles, also known as speculative bubbles, are not rare, people repeatedly fail to recognize speculative trading as it's happening. Too often, those involved only identify these risky activities after it happened. Once the bubble explodes, it's already too late. One of the crucial reasons for this is that bubbles are often driven by strong emotions stopping people's ability to make rational decisions. When traders who are willing to take huge risks start operating in that environment, you have a recipe for disaster. Bubbles can be very damaging, especially for those who arrive late with the hope of getting something for nothing. Hi, my name is Gio, hope you're doing well. In today's episode, let's understand what are the economic bubbles, which are the four types of an economic bubble, what are the stages, what is causing it, how to identify a bubble, and how to invest during a stock market bubble. Let's get right into it. First of all, let's understand what an economic bubble is. The term bubble is an economic context refers to a situation where the price for something like an individual stock, a financial asset, or even an entire sector, market, or asset class is bigger than its intrinsic value by a large margin. Because speculative demand rather than intrinsic worth is the reason for the inflated prices, the bubble eventually but inevitably pops and massive sell-offs cause prices to decline, often quite drastically. In mass cases, in fact, a speculative bubble is followed by a big crash. The effect of the bubble is usually only observed after it happened. And so it was also the case for the first known economic bubble, the tulip mania, which led to a rise in prices for tulips and a surge in speculation, which then led to a giant crash the year after. Today, there is another possibility of a bubble, which is the leverage bubble, which is fueled by outstanding credit. With the leveraging, people lend money and speculate on assets, which leads to a leverage effect of their own capital. Leverage bubble are a greater hit to the economy as they have a ripple effect on the whole financial industry and not just on the speculation bubble itself. Four types of economic bubbles. Unfortunately, every type of financial asset can be involved in a bubble. Looking at the past, we can differentiate four types of economic bubbles. The first one is a stock market bubble. A well-known stock market bubble was the famous dot-com bubble in the late 1990s. This economic bubble type involves especially equity like stocks, ETFs, and other financial assets associated with companies. Usually, it is limited to a certain sector, example the internet industry in the dot-com bubble, and it is fit by a new technology paradigm or boost of a new business model. Asset market bubble can be seen in the real estate market but also in currencies. In these bubble categories can be also traditional currencies like euros or USD, but also new currencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and other cryptocurrencies but also NFTs. Credit market bubbles, when the market for business and consumers' loans, debt instruments and other form of credit is uh, suddenly rising, then we speak of a credit market bubble. This could be corporate bonds, government issue bonds, mortgages, but also an increase in uh, leasing as called buy now, pay later loans. Commodity bubbles, in commodity bubbles, the price of traded commodities are increasing. Commodities include tangible assets and raw materials like oil, gas, industrial metals, agricultural crops, but also tulips like in the tulip mania. Five stages of economic bubbles. Usually, bubbles can only be observed after they happen as they are not always clear sign of them visible. But there is few evidence that almost every bubble had the same stages. And we have stage number one, which is displacement. This is the stage where people fall in love with new product or technology. It is also very often a major change in the economy. In the case of the tulips in Holland in the 60s, the country was experiencing strong economic growth due to the boom in uh, international trade. Since tulips were rare, took a long time to grow and most importantly were seen as a symbol of wealth, they were the perfect condition to drive the Dutch people to destruction. We have stage number two, which is boom. During the excitement phase, prices begin to rise, but only modestly. 
during the boom phase as more and more buyers want to join, prices increase but exponentially. This is usually the phase where the mainstream media begin to cover the topic and ordinary people begin to take an interest. We see the first sign of a financial bubble with the behavior like FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. This is where speculation really takes off. In the case of tulips, although they arrived in Holland in the 16th century, the real boom took place between 1934 and 1937. To fully understand the boom phase, we just need to remember how the dynamic of supply and demand works. If demand for something new increases very rapidly and supply remains stable, theoretically prices should rise. The more pronounced the effect, the fastest price will rise. We have stage number 3, which is euphoria. Here is where caution is uh, thrown to the wind and asset prices soar. Investors have made so much money on their investment that they can't imagine value going down. And they tell all their friends. This is the phase where your uncle, your neighbor or your cab driver are telling you to get into the action. People who buy during the euphoria phase don't realize that the only way to make money is if someone else decides to buy after they did. But who will be your next buyer if everyone is already on the game? Unfortunately, this is usually the phase where small investors are the most heavily hit. During the tulip bubble, many people wanting to get rich quickly and uh, went so far to sell their house their land and use all their savings in order to buy few or even a single tulip bulb. These are the people who lost everything. We have stage number four, which is the profit taking. Institutional investors get the warning signs usually earlier and therefore they start the fourth phase of the bubble, the profit taking and securing of the profits. Due to the irrational behavior in the market, it can also be that large investors take out the profits too early and need to hold on to the asset for too long, diminishing the first effect as it's always hard to predict what overvaluation is still okay and when the bubble will pop. This part will also lead to less trading and more supply on the market. Going back to our tulips, the dealers who had the action of the public were the first to realize that demand was rapidly increasing and were the first to sell their tulips. In uh, today's market, institutional investors have some of the uh, same information as the dealers had then because they know who is buying what and who is selling what. And we have the last stage which is panic. Once an event triggered the last stage, there is no turning back for the bubble. It can be a single event, a single company crash or uh, some external factors that finally trigger the bubble. Asset prices fall, margin calls for investors force them to sell and other factors including fear of losing money leads to panic like sell off the assets. This leads to an excessive supply in the market for limited demand. When panic hit the general public in uh, 1637, the price of tulips collapses within the months and those who had bought at top price had to sell for uh, less than a quarter of what they paid. What causes asset bubbles? Asset bubbles can begin in uh, many ways. Interest rates might be low, which tend to encourage borrowing for spending, expansion and investment. Low interest rates and uh, other favorable conditions in a nation encourage more and more foreign investment. New product or technology prompt demand and when something is in demand, its price is rising. There are shortages of an asset causing the cost of its uh, rise drastically, again the supply and demand principle. What happens when an asset bubble pops? A lot of things can happen when an asset bubble finally pops, as it always does eventually. Sometimes the effect can be small, causing losses to only a few, but uh, other times it can be followed by a stock market crash and an economic recession or even a depression. It depends on how big the bubble is, if it involves uh, relatively small asset classes or a significant sectors like tech stocks or real estate, and of course how much investment money is involved. A 2015 research study called Leverage Bubble examined asset bubbles 
in 17 countries going back to the 1870s it categorized them into four types but along two basic lines based on credit that is how funded investment were by financing and borrowing the study found that the more credit involved the more damaging the bubbles pop that fueled equity bubbles lead to longer recession even worse were leverage housing bubbles like the one that popped in 2006-2007 leading to the mortgage crisis which leads to the Great Recession. How to recognize an economic bubble? It is common to classify something as a bubble when the price is uh, skyrocketing but it is actually hard to categorize something as a bubble until it is too late. Not all speculative activities that lead to price increase in the first place result in a change in expectation that caused the price to crash. Even so, it's possible to recognize signs of a bubble when uh, an asset price rises above and beyond its fundamental value or intrinsic value. By identifying behavior that uh, lines up with the early stage of a bubble, it may be possible to recognize an economic bubble while it's happening. So it's impossible to know if and when prices will eventually fall. How to invest during a stock market bubble? Because bubbles are driven by speculative behavior, the associated activity falls more within the day trading rather than long-term investing. Even so, you may be wiped out in a bubble without intending to do so. For example, the housing bubble of the mid-2000s affected homeowners of all types. Those people who bought or sold when prices were going up as well as those who held into their homes as the bubble ran its course. To avoid this risk of participating in a bubble that eventually pops, it's important to carefully consider your reasons for investing before you do so. If you are chasing returns out of some feelings of FOMO, then your expectation for returns are likely driven more by speculative than an asset fundamental value. That's why experts recommend most investors buy into a diversified mix of low-cost index funds to minimize the risk and position for long-term growth. It may not have the highest return, but also doesn't usually have the extreme low either. The bottom line is, with many kinds of economic bubble in history, we see that there is always a potential for a bubble due to our nature. Behavior economics shows that we only look at information we like and we tend to oversee factors because we are gamers by nature. A key problem with the financial bubbles is that they are not always identified until after they explode. At this point, it is too late for preventative measures. The hope is that by spreading information on this topic, investors will become more in tune with the cautionary sign and uh, understand that market prices won't go up forever. Just a reminder, nothing from this channel should be considered an investment and financial advice because the information is presented without consideration of the investment objectives, risk tolerance or financial circumstances of any specific investor and might not be suitable for all investors. Investing involves risk, including the possibility of loss of principal. Investors should consider engaging a qualified financial and tax professional to determine a suitable investment strategy. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you find this content helpful, smash that like and subscribe button to help this channel grow, turn on the notification bell, and check out all the links in the description down below. See you in the next video. Stay safe.